Good day, Suzanne. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How how has your week been? Happy May. Busy. A lot of lot of projects, a lot of deadlines, but I'm I'm meeting them. That's awesome. Well, you're always you're always really great about that. Um, so, Mark, uh, one of the questions that we always ask our guests, in addition to tips for emerging professionals interested in digital marketing, is just what's happening in the digital marketing space that you're seeing. Well, uh, due to COVID, 2020 into 2021 has been a huge pivot for a lot of businesses, which has really affected my business very positively. My business grew during this time because local businesses that were like retail, business to consumer businesses had to quickly build out their websites and put all their products for sale on the website. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, it created a, a surge in the need for, you know, more websites and then improved websites, redoing websites. And uh, we've been busy as heck because of it, because of the pivot yeah. uh, to, to virtual, the invert creating a virtual environment for retail, you know, as well as physical. Yeah, and one of the things that you're known for is uh, Google My Business pages. In fact, you just did a flash talk for Newport Interactive Marketing that focused on uh, what local businesses should be doing with their Google My Business pages. And why, why is that important? Important for a couple of reasons. The first one is that when you do a Google search for a product or service in your local community, you'll notice in the search that you always get three map listings to the top of the page. We call that the Google three pack or even a four pack now of four businesses that are in right on the map in your area. And that shows at the top of the page before you even see regular search results. So being in that map at the top of the page is actually you know, more important really than landing your website on the front page in regular search. And that's, yeah, that's okay. the first reason. You know, and the second reason is that Google's goal is, is what you and I hear at the conferences we go to for digital marketing is that Google wants to transition itself from being a portal to more of a destination where people mm -hmm. can get a lot of their answers by looking at the search results without even having to click through to the site. And, you know, websites will be around for another 10, 15, 20 years, but, but you know, what's showing up in Google first before they go to the site is becoming more important in getting them to get to your site, if that makes sense. Interesting. Yeah. No, I think it does make sense. It's um, it's fascinating when you think about how it all fits together and how important it is for all that foot traffic to, you know, or would be foot traffic, right? Because that at least last year was a big challenge for especially small businesses who have storefronts. Is people just were not getting out there. Um, so how do you how do you bring people, and how do you become? I like to think of it as destination shopping. Yeah, and the bottom line is in what what I do, search engine optimization. You know, we help businesses show up in Google search for the product or service that they sell. So if someone's not aware of your brand, they're not gonna they're not gonna Google your brand. They're gonna Google you know, um, you know, fall weather fall weather gear. Uh, you know, I need a, I need to go sailing this weekend, and I want to pick up a raincoat. So I'm, I'm going to Google fall weather gear near me, and uh, you know, get them to the appropriate store to find that. Yeah, right. Yeah, because it's it's important, um, especially for local small businesses, right? And they're competing against Amazon and online ordering, and yeah, pretty soon there'll be the drones dropping dropping off jackets at your door. Yeah. So thankfully, a lot of people want to shop local, and that's that's a good thing. And you know, and by the way, we don't want to just talk about retail. There are other businesses that you know that that you know are uh, you know business to business, and you know, and or strictly online. You know, there's a lot of different businesses that we help. With. But but I like working with local businesses, and I think that for anyone that's young looking to come into digital marketing, they need to know that there's search engine optimization for websites that reach the whole country or the world. But there's also another subset of SEO, which is called local SEO, which is just helping local businesses get local internet traffic to their website to get business from local consumers. And it's a completely different animal in the way that it works. And it's a great opportunity for a career. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you've made a career out of it. What led you to this? 
Uh, back in the, I worked for a mortgage company for uh, a long time, worked in that business for 25 years. And, and I worked in marketing and sales and then operations. I worked all three and I used to help run the Google ads. And uh, one day I asked the Google ads person, I looked at the screen and I pointed to it and I said, hey, they're on Google page one and they didn't pay for an ad. How did they do that? And she said, that's called organic search. And I said, what's that? And she said, well, you do SEO to do that. And I said, what the heck is SEO? And she said, search engine optimization. She said, that's fixing your website and publishing information online and other websites to push your website to page one. So I was fascinated by the idea of getting to the front page of Google. Um, so I started working with our website at the company and I was starting to get results and I started tinkering with SEO and then I started to learn it and then I started doing websites and other stuff and I just fell into the career. But it all began with trying to get to page one because if you get to page one in Google, you're gonna get traffic and customers and you don't have to pay for ads once you've done that or it pays for much ads. And then bigger companies do SEO and ads and they just mm -hmm. get more and more business, so. Right, yeah, no, it's it's all, it's so interesting how it all works and, and also how it's all very interconnected. Um, what, what's your take I'd on- like to ask, I'd like to ask a young person, you know, if, if, you, know, if you, you wanna find out whether search engine optimization is important, how often do you Google something? <laughs> There's your answer, right? <laughs> so, right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And, well, I think one one interesting thing is uh, when you talk about um, search or intent, right? Because everybody gets really excited about um, about social media, right? But how how does search engine optimization compare to social media? Well, I mean, search engine optimization is, is, is different because you're just trying to figure out what people are typing into Google and when they're searching for it. But intent is important. Um, you know, intent usually involves a longer phrase. You know what I mean? So just a simple concept of like, um, you know, I gave an example of, a, I worked with a therapy company in Chicago and it was, uh, you know, behavioral therapy for children. And just, you know, if we, if we got to page one for behavioral therapy, that was good. But getting to page one for behavioral therapist is better because oh, the person great. is looking for a therapist and they're looking to sign up with a therapist. It's a better word. So I like to use that example because it's very simple. It's like yeah. behavioral therapy, they could just be writing a college paper about behavioral therapy. They could be right. curious about it. But if you go to the word therapist, they want a, they want a therapist and they want it business so simple example right yeah but no i think really important and i think also a, a good tip if um if you're not really familiar with the ins and outs of seo whether you're an emerging professional or you're or you're a small business owner is that you know google is a machine right it's all machine learning at this point and uh i mean they do have some humans in some layers but the difference between therapy and therapist and therapist, right? Are those three different keywords there? They are, yes. Yeah, a plural search is, is different. And we try to rank for both therapy, therapist and therapist plural, yeah. Yeah. Do you like to play Scrabble? Oh yeah, <laughs> any, any word game, you know, of course. Yeah, how do you know if SEO is right for you? Do you like to play Scrabble or Bananagrams? <laughs> yeah, there you go, yeah. But again, and I also came from a sales background before and, and SEO is like sales because it involves a lot of competitive analysis. A lot of SEO is looking at what your competitors are saying and doing and selling, and then you figuring out what you have in your product or service product line that is different from them. So mm -hmm. in sales, you always sold your niche, right? What you had that was different and better. We do the same thing in SEO. We go right to what is, what is as you know, in classic digital marketing, what is your unique, unique selling proposition? And we wanna make sure you say that in words on your website. So that's the beauty of SEO is you can, you know, and we have tools, we have software. We can look at the wording you and I think people would use to find that unique selling point for the product or service, but we have tools that can tell us what people are actually typing in Google to find that. 
and it, we discover other words. And another good thing about SEO is synonyms. Like I'll give you an example of a synonym. I was just thinking like a thesaurus. Yeah. Uh, Google uh, dog sitter has 99 hits a month, right? Dog walker also has 99 hits, 100 hits a month. And I worked with someone once that was a dog sitter and they didn't have the word dog walker on their site. Put dog walker on the site and the traffic went up because wow, half yeah. the public's using dog walker, not dog sitter, you know, just right. little things like that. So that's the beauty of SEO is that words matter, little words matter. Um, but I want to talk about SEO in terms of the big picture too. Like, you know, in the, there's, there's, you need a website to be in the internet marketing world. So, you know, young people want to look at the fact, you know, do they want to develop the code for the website? Are they an engineer and a programmer? Do they want to write the website? Are they a writer? You know, what, what, what are they interested in? Do they want to design the website, make it look, you know, attractive? Are they a designer? Do they have artistic talent, creative talent? You know, there's all these different avenues that, that uh, young people can go into for a career in digital marketing, you know, social media, communicating to the followers of the business. And, uh, and then there's back to the website, there's blogging, which is explaining more in depth about the advantages of the product or the uses of the product or the how to's of the product, uh, you know, and, and then there's ads, there's Google ads. I mean, if you've got the budget, you can put yourself right on the top of the page uh, for any, any keyword right away, if you have the budget. And a lot of right. times you need to do that. When you first open a business, you need to run ads because it mm -hmm. takes a long time to build up your website pages and your blogs and your SEO and, and even your social following. So you should be running Google ads or Facebook ads or whatever out of the shoot. So right. but for the young people listening to this, you know, I just gave you all kinds of different jobs you could do. And, and I feel my message to the younger generation is very simple. There's more job security in finding a need in the market than any other security you're going to find. If, you know, I figured out that businesses needed to get to Google page one and they needed to do it locally. And, you know, that need is there and it's, that needs growing. And, you know, I'm not worried about my next paycheck. I don't get a paycheck, I'm self-employed, but I know that businesses need this and they're gonna need it and they need it bad. And especially people that open new businesses, I get calls, they're desperate to start, so. Yeah, yeah, it's it's challenging, especially now. Um, there's a statistic that I was looking at on the Bureau, Bureau of Labor Statistics and marketing and digital marketing is adding like, just in, just in, Boston area, Boston and New York, it's like 80,000 jobs a year. That's a lot of jobs when you think about it, right? So if you're thinking, oh, I'm, you know, want to go into um, environmental engineering, like, great. Well, how many environmental engineers are going to get hired this year versus like digital marketing is a huge need and a huge opportunity. And, um, and I think a lot of businesses now are finding that they need help. Um, they need to be hiring, but one of the downsides is that a lot of businesses you need to be on site, and particularly the way RYNU, the Digital Marketing Career Builder, is set up, is that it actually teaches you how to be proficient at working remotely. So you're learning the digital marketing skills, and you're learning how to be a good remote worker, good remote teamwork um, teammate. And actually get the job done. And I think that that's, that's a whole skill in itself. But especially for digital marketers, it's, it's really important. And as we've heard in the world of marketing and even life coaching or career coaching, one of the words that comes up is the riches are in the niches, you know? Yeah. And when you become a specialist in one piece of that digital marketing world, you'll make more money because you'll be the go-to expert. And people mm -hmm. want expertise, they want experience, you know. Uh, I don't consider myself an expert. I just consider myself experienced. And I've worked on 450 businesses in 15 years. So my value add is that I just kind of know what's going on now, you know. I know I don't have to worry about whether or not something's going to work. I think that's, that's the experience part of it is very important. You got to get out there um, and help businesses and work with them. Um, and experience is big. Yeah. I thought you were going to say you worked with 450 businesses just in the past year because I had heard that you had volunteered quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I did. I, I, yeah, I worked with, I don't know, probably 
it was at least 75. Yeah, it, it was a, a crazy number, but yeah. Yeah, the, the last spring, I think it's just the last spring, right? Yep. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, the idea of, of niching and, you know, how, how did, would you come across opportunities to discover like what, what your niche might, what you want, might want your niche to be? Well, I think it's really important to focus on what you like, you know, like when I was talking earlier about, you know, are you a writer? Are you a designer? Are you a technician? You know what I mean, you know, and, and just figuring out what your aptitude is. If we talk about digital marketing, which one of those areas actually interests you, you know what I mean? And that's mm -hmm. the one you want to go for because I, I just think when you're doing something you like and are interested in, it's going to hold your attention more and you're going to really, you know, push hard to do it and, and to succeed and win because the other part of starting a career is that you have to have the motivation and the drive to stay with it. I mean, um, you know, starting anything is difficult. You know, it's a long road and it's a long journey. But if you have something that kind of excites you and, makes you curious, uh, you know, to, as a mental challenge to learn it and master it, uh, then you'll, uh, you'll go a long way in your career, have that drive, which is really curiosity and, and, and the thrill of victory. You want to win the war. You know, so. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm just curious. So the concept of mastery, I think is really interesting. I don't know if it's just that I wasn't, I wasn't swimming in that pond, or what, but uh, the, the idea that you, uh, you learn a skill and you master that skill. And it's, this is especially important with younger children, right? That then that positive experience sets them up for future success. And I think it's something that applies to um, when, you're at, when you're starting your career, right? Like this to start out on a positive note, I think is really important. And I know, I mean, my dream was to be a journalist. And when I got into my first full-time full -time permanent gig, because I had done a lot of full-time reporting as an intern, uh, as a paid intern. Um, but when it came time to like, okay, this is a paycheck and a salary, um, I did not have a very good experience. And it wasn't just me, like it was just universal. That was the culture. I mean, part of it is newsrooms, they have that culture. But I think agencies often have that culture as well. And uh, to walk in with some skills under your belt, I think is really important that people see that you are bringing uh, a distinct set of values and, and skills that make you, you know, that prove your worth, right? I think that especially, and I guess we're getting into kind of office politics, right? But like when you have a bunch of people who have worked together and they're experienced, and then you have somebody new coming in, um, it can be a challenge, right? For the rest of the team to understand, like they kind of need to nurture the new, you know, um, nurture the new puppy along, if you, if you want to think about it that way. And, you know, also, old dogs. But I also think that the, the desire to succeed and the motivation to succeed is something an employer can pick up on. And uh, I had a friend that ran a big headhunter agency and his formula for placing people was based more on the person's character, attributes, attitude, and motivation wow. than it was on their credentials. Hmm. You know, and I think that that's important, you know? Yeah. Because those people would work harder to get there. You know, and that's right. what was his whole secret and it worked. Yeah. That's fantastic. So I like that. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Motivating and excited and wanting to, you know, wanting to succeed, you know, and not just for yourself to, to help the company and help the world, you know, and, you know, um, you know, I like helping businesses, you know, you know, I'm helping the economy, I'm helping the world, but there are some businesses that really are just so interesting and, you know, people working in healthcare, helping to save lives, you know, working with people that work with animals. I help animal websites and, you know, you know, there's, there can be some uh, ideologic uh, gain out of uh, just helping people, you know, help the world. You know? One of the things that I often ask guests on, uh, on this podcast is, is about fit, right? And like, if you're interviewing for a number of positions and maybe the interview has gone well or hasn't gone well, I think um, getting, do you have any tips on on fit and, and you know, disappointment maybe if you don't get the position? Yeah, I, I, I would say, you know, um, 
I, I would say that, first of all, let's go back to basic sales. This is a good tip right here. It's a numbers right. game. You've got to talk to a lot of people to get a job. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just realize that it, it may not, it, it sometimes can be very easy and you can get lucky and get right in. But a lot of times a job search is, is a long term. A job search is a job in and of itself. So you need to look at your job search as a job and approach it yeah. like a job and do a lot of outreach and do a lot of investigation. But I hear a lot of success stories um, where the person that gets the job is the person that has spent the time to do their due diligence to research the company, research the corporate philosophy, research the environment. Uh, so a lot of that is that the more elbow grease you put into it, you know, and the more contacts you make and the more interviews you have, the less disappointed you're going to be because you're going to yeah. realize that you just got to keep plugging. So that that's part of my antidote to that. Um, but yeah, I mean, the other one is, you know, when one door closes, another door opens and you just got to yeah. keep a positive mental attitude. And, uh, you know, you know, if you're not a fit, you're not a fit. Maybe you wouldn't have been. My point is, if, if they tell you you're not a fit, you probably wouldn't have been happy there anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, True. No that, right. Yeah. But I think it speaks to the riches are in the niches again. Now, now we're full circle, right? That the same is true um, in your job search, that you're better off spending, dedicating, like finding out, I want to work for this type of company in this location and doing this type of work. Um, but also let's, let's talk about network a little bit, because I think it's difficult when you've been in school. Um, it was funny, a friend of mine from college sent me a message on LinkedIn and said, I can't believe your niece is graduating from college. I'm like, how did, how did she know that? And it's because my niece had connected with her because she was connected to my brother-in-law, you know, and so my brother-in-law set, set her up and was like, you need to be on LinkedIn and connect with all these people. And yep, this person, this person, this person, this person, the people who know a lot of people. Um, and I happen to know a lot of people who know a lot of people. So, uh, yeah, just building out a network. Do you have any tips on that? I did BNI for years, Business Network International, and you know the referral network. And we would in the room with forty other people in BNI. We would say in our local community, does anybody know anybody that works at this hospital? I want to get in there and sell my product to the hospital. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We would ask people, you know, if somebody knew somebody somewhere, because if somebody knows somebody, they can introduce you. So if you try to call them, you're going to go to voicemail and they're never going to take your call, right? But if they know Sally and you know Sally, Sally can say, hey, look, I met this guy, Mark, that I think could really help your, uh, you know, your new podiatry department at the hospital get more customers, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, so, you know, and that's part of it. But the other part of it is, is to, yeah, research an industry, you know, and then start asking everybody you meet, you know, do you know anybody that works in that industry? And if sure. you ask enough people, you're going to find someone that does. And you're going to call that person and say, hey, you know, I'm trying to figure this out. I'm trying to get into this industry. You know, what right. do you suggest? And they may say, oh, my God, we're having a, a you know, a big conference uh, in three weeks. You know, why don't you come along and take a look at all the companies that are going to be there, you know, uh, trade shows. You know, we will have trade shows again now that COVID is yeah. hopefully ending. So, you yeah. know. Well, it's interesting because I, I attended MarTech virtually and uh, there was a student there who's graduating who, you know, they had this speed networking thing and we connected on speed networking and then she <clears throat> emailed me after and said, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, said, can I, can I interview you? Because I have a bunch of questions and I said, yeah, why don't you come on the podcast and you can interview me? <laughs> so kill two birds with one stone. Um, yeah, that she got her information because I said, you know what, the questions that you're going to have are the same questions a lot of emerging professionals are going to have. And so let's, let's share, you know, my answers, um, to help as many people as we possibly can. So it's super fun. And, um, yeah, reaching out to people for information on interviews is really important. It's a really important thing. And, uh, actively building out your network, spending time on LinkedIn, you know, as soon as finals are over, you got to jump in there. Um, and one of the nice pieces about ROI and you is that, you know, you're also an instructor. You are also a great person who's extremely well networked. Um, so all our students will be connecting with you. You'll get a chance to meet all of the students and they'll have a chance to tap into your network 
Um, and again, those referrals are really important and uh, get a chance to get to know students, get to tap into one another's networks and be able to um, refer them. Um, and also we are making um, introductions to agencies who are actively hiring, uh, actively hiring younger marketers with less experience. Um, typically they look for, um, they look for people with three years experience, but um, they are confident that after going through the course that they would be able to easily adapt and integrate. So that's a great opportunity for the agencies to, to grow and, uh, and find qualified candidates and also for the students to be able to zip right into a spot that's open. And I think the hopeful thing for, for uh, young uh, career minded folks to realize is that there's a concept called six to six degrees of separation there's only six mm -hmm. degrees of separation between you and anybody else in the world like everybody knows somebody so to validate that networking can really work to help you land a job is is very real you know yeah. if you just ask enough people that you know and they know you will find your way into an industry or a company you know you'll find someone that is in the industry or knows someone at a company somewhere that can help you get in Really, that's real. Yeah, I think it's hard to imagine that, you know, when when your world is like the people you went to high school with, I in particular went to a really small high school, there were 90 other people who graduated with me, um, you know, and it's hard to, you know, and I went to a reasonably small college and then I went to a huge graduate school. I went to University of South Carolina and, um, but then moved back up here, right? So that, so it's just interesting um, you know, especially if you go to a smaller college, maybe the career services doesn't have, you know, all the support in your area of expertise or what you're interested in. There are other ways to go ahead and build out those connections and network um, that are really important. But like you said, it takes being proactive and, uh, and taking the initiative. Don't wait for your ship to come in. Swim out to it. <laughs> That's perfect. Well, Mark, I know that you have to get back to uh, to your tasks, and I do too. And uh, it was really great to chat with you, as always. And I'm really looking forward to all the all the skills that you are going to infuse in our ROI and ROI in you students when our cohort launches in June. And our cart's going to be opening up in the beginning of June. So if you're interested in applying, go ahead and uh, check out the website and ask for an application. We can't wait to uh, join in on the fun in June. Yeah, it's going to be great. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Thank you all. See you. Okay, bye. bye.